Yes, guys. So, me know a long time when you know when I ask you, oh, what well, go on, what well, go on, what well, go on. But yeah, again, guys, you don't know where we get it, right? Yeah. If you want a number one YouTuber in Jamaica when it comes to funeral, you understand me? The Lumley's Flim, yeah? So, Cruz, known as Teddy, O'Brien Brooks. Yes, that's the funeral where, you know, we are bring to you guys. Ah, uh, yes, it was from right here in Westmoreland, I think. Uh, you know, it was taken down by woodlums in uh, Little London, Broughton. Yep, I think they say it was like 25, 26, somewhere there. But you guys know Popeyes carry all of them or something. So, you can go over Popeyes and, you know, you can find the information pertaining that. But... It's just funny, you know, guys, that the young generation just a go, just a go, just a go. The young man, them just a go, just a go, just a go. And it's very sad. It's very, very, very sad. And also, yes, guys, people keep asking me, oh, Lumley, you're the booking, you're the booking. Guys, yes, we do booking. We do live streaming. Yes, we do straight video. Yes, if you want to book us, just book us. All right, we do it. Yes. So, we're going to get in the video because I have work tonight and I have funeral in the morning. Ashley funeral uh suit funeral couple more funeral so yes guys man look at the night video yes look around and people big up on yourself yes and for the subscriber they want to watch all the while and the supporter from near and far big up on yourself no support make the night video all right enough love <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, yes, yes.
precious Lord. Take my hand. that we respect 
the sanctuary, the house of God, and the grounds of the church. What I came here and saw not too long ago, it wasn't good. And I'm asking us not to do this. Do not desecrate the house of God. The smoking, we can't stop you from the smoke. But if you have to smoke, please don't do it on the church grounds. We can stop you from drinking alcohol, but please don't do it on the church grounds. Anything of that sort, please do it outside of the church compound. If we see things like this continuing, we'll have to make some decisions about funerals, which we don't want to make. But you can make the decision for us whether we continue to do these funerals or not. If these are the actions that must be displayed, then the church will have to make its decision. Please don't allow us to have to go to that. All right? Respect the church. Respect the house of God. Respect the grounds of the church. Don't come with your smoking. Don't come with your bad bird cursing. Don't come with no bike railing. Don't come with no ganja smoking. All right? I humbly ask of you. I love you all. I don't want you to feel bad with me, but this is what we must do. All right? Thank you very much. And let's have a good day as we put Cruz bodies body to us. Thank you.
Psalm 27 verse 1 declares, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Thank God for the promise and the comfort we receive in his words. We gathered here together today for the Thanksgiving service for a Danny Brooks, otherwise called Cruz. We want to give God thanks today that we are able to breathe, to move, and to exist. We give him all the praise. Let's just go to our opening hymn. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. Let's stand together as we do the, the same. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. He makes me down to
our comfort and our hope. We give you thanks for this day that you have made. We thank you, mighty God, for your many blessings on our lives. And as your word declares, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We've come together today on this sad occasion, laying to rest the remains of this young man. Father, we can do nothing of ourselves, and because of that, we invoke your presence among us today. We ask that you give strength to those who are weak. We ask for comfort for those who cry. We ask, mighty God, that your presence will fill this place and fill the hearts of your people. I pray, mighty God, that those who mourn, you will remind them today that there's a blessing in their mourning because your word declares that they shall be comforted. I pray, mighty God, that you will just take control of everything that we do today. We bind the forces of darkness, anything and everything that is not of you, anything that comes from the enemy, the wicked one, the son of perdition, we bind and we rebuke it even now. And we declare that your presence will fill this place. And as we go through, both in the sanctuary, on the road, and to the final resting place where this young man's body will be laid, you will have full control. There will you will not have your way. We ask that you just direct the hearts of everyone today. Take full control and allow everything, mighty God, to be done decently and in order. We crave your presence. We crave your help. We crave everything that you will want to give us today because we know that you are our God and you have a great plan for us. I pray, mighty God, that even the ministry of your word today you will lead and you will direct what my thoughts will, will flow today and you will be glorified. Every song, the reading of your word, uh, every tribute that will be rendered today, we hand over to you and we ask you, mighty God, to have your way for we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, everyone. Let me express my personal sympathies to the members of the family. Uh, I'm seeing his mother, his grandmother, other family members uh, who are here, and uh, all the friends who are in the sanctuary. The Lord bless you, and I pray continually for your strength and the peace of God and for your comfort. I am indeed happy to have with me today Reverend Clover Robinson. She is the presbyter for Region 4 Churches in Westmoreland and the pastor of the Highway Assembly of God. She will be directing us through the program. Reverend Robinson, the Lord bless you. Thank you, Bishop. Bless the name of the Lord. The Word of God said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure to our generation. I want to extend also my condolences to the bereaved family. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. But I want to let you know that God is able to see you through. I encourage you today. Be strong. Be courageous. Because death is not easy to face. But God, he has the answer for all of our situations. God bless you. God bless you. Our first lesson come to us from Ecclesiastic chapter 3, 1 through 8. And Jada Brooks Lees will come and do that. And after we will have a selection by the Allen sisters and the tribute as follows. Come in this order, please. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
My sister is not here with me this morning, unfortunately, but um, I'll just sing. This
gathered here today to say, to say goodbye and share the memories of a life that was cut too short, of a loved one who will forever be in our hearts. We mourn the loss and we mourn the loss of a precious soul whose absence leave us a gap in hope in the lives of those left behind with memories that will forever bind. We remember the laughter and the smiles, the kindness that went on for miles, the warmth and love that shone through, a light that we will always hold on to. Though your time with us was brief, you brought so much love and relief to those who knew you and loved you dear. And we will always keep you in our memory near. So we will bind our final farewell. We know that you are now at peace. Well, rest easy, dear cousin, in eternal sleep. Forever in our hearts, your spirits will always keep.
made some. I know the Lord. of my life. The loving memories of his childhood ways are ever vibrant in my heart each day. How blessed I felt to watch him grow from tender childhood to young adult. And as he grew in the stature and in years, I marveled at the beauty of his growth, warm and compassionate, giving of himself. As a family man, and what's more to behold, in his work, bringing therapy to the young and the old, sharing with others his love and zest for life, while I, his father, pray for his bright future, still for my little boy, the joy of my life. Yes, the Lord. We'll go back to the trivia. Stephanie, C. 
Stevens spells Portia Davis aunt and Kitty Smith family friend. Good afternoon. I will be reading the tribute on behalf of his boss, Stephanie. Dear Cruz, losing you. Dear Cruz, losing you is very overwhelming and devastating. The love we had was so strong and it has been broken by death. It leave behind an intense and lasting edit. The pain, the pain of losing you manifests in various ways, such as sadness, broken hearted, hunger, I did not get to say goodbye, confusion, why you? And a profound sense of em emptiness. This is by the far this is by far the hardest moment in my life. No one really knew the connection we share. We were far from perfect, but I love you unconditionally. It, did, it didn't matter what you did. I would always forgive you. In a, in a, in a heartbreak, I know, I know me young, me young for you. It never matter what no one said, you were my person and we always find our way back to each other no matter the situation or obstacles. Only death could tear us apart. A part of me went with you, but you left a lot of you with me. Your sons are here, Odeni Brooks. It breaks me physically and mentally. I will never see or hold you in my arms again. It's the, real, it's the reality I had to accept eventually. I wish I could turn back on the hands of time or wish upon a star to have you here. You were my everything. You are one in a million. I love you so much. Odeni O'Brien Brooks, you are truly Steph.
remembering the good and bad memories that will never fade for all the years our lives entwined forever in our hearts enshrined a life so full of laughter and love my cousin was a blessing from above he was a brother to us all our dearest friend and his passing leaves our hearts to mend he he was always there to lend a hand in times of need he would understand he shared so many memories with us his absence won't be easy to discuss. We'll forever miss his contagious smile, his humor that made us laugh for miles. We'll take comfort in the love he showed and the lessons that he bestowed. Rest in peace, our dearest cousin. You will never be forgotten, not even by one. We'll cherish the memories we shared until the day we can be together again and be repaired. On behalf of my mother, Sebshad, Teddy Cruz, you had a golden heart. You were such an humble and vibrant soul. You loved children and were so respectful to the adults around you. You were born to the Brooks family, but were later adopted by the Simit family. You were where you were loved and appreciated by everyone in the family yard. You were the son that I never had. I made sure that your dinner was always waiting for you, no matter the time of the night you decide to show up. Teddy and Jay would collect their dinner if it even a minute before midnight, but that didn't bother me. Now that you have left us in a manner and a time that none of us are able to process, to this very day, we did not even get a chance to sit by your bedside and share our many memories, even if it meant sharing you up. We are only left with the many golden memories you have created on your short walk on earth. We never wanted memories, we only wanted you. The love you showed towards kids, was, towards kids was incompatible to none. You brought so much excitement in their hearts. I can remember how often I would miss Mac Mac and get so worried about him only to see him well after and tell me, and to say, Teddy Carey was square. I remember who was the little red man with a temper like no other. While growing up, I watched him play with my children, but once he loses the game, there come the tears and he will run back to Brooks Yard, but that wouldn't stop him from showing up the next day for playtime. Cruz was never a troublemaker. To be honest, he was afraid of trouble. You truly left me without words. There is a pain lingering in my heart. Cruz's only dream was to be an entrepreneur so he could help his mother, especially his words. There are so many memories of you, not lost in my head, but unable to come alive because I was hoping this would be you at my funeral and not me at yours. Prove you were one of the happiest men as long as you have these things, your family, money, cars, bikes, and girls, just keeping it real, you have, just keeping it real. You never have to ask if a cruise are come, cause make me tell you, if a bike you ever hear it, way from up across road. And why the things I ever tried to carry, no difference. But sure, we used to fret for him every day. When I would ask him why him have to drive on one, so his reply, it's him, the jet, the boys, and the girls. That was Cruz's thing that he liked. That make him happy. He would say, and he said, me not work for nobody. I'm my own boss. Words from primary school. Once he was set on anything, don't even make an attempt to change that mind. We know you're not here, but your presence lingers in the shadow. You don't see what we see, but we hear you laughing with us when we laugh. You left behind a place that cannot be filled in a high tribute to you. Life can be the same after a trick has been lost, but never after the loss of a treasure. Rest well in eternally peace for Danny O'Brien Woods. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. Indeed, sometimes it takes a mountain, sometimes a troubled sea, sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. But God's love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. I thank God for His love. And His love is what keeps us going even in these rough times of our lives. Let me acknowledge uh, Mom. She, she sang earlier and I, I, I really felt your pain as you sung, but you were so strong, Pat, as you did what you were doing. The Lord bless you and continually cover you. Also, Grandmother Miss Pet, the Lord bless you. It's good to see you holding up at this time. Father, Mr. Lennox Brooks sitting at the front, and um, aunts and other family members. I see Annette and the woman is as as um, well. Portia was there. She's not there right now. Oh, she's right there. Okay, God bless you. I know it's a hard time. I can tell you, we, we, and, and the, the thing about death, it's no respect of persons. It's an appointment that will come to everybody at some point. It's something that we can never get used to. I, I would have attended many hundreds of funerals in my stint as a pastor. I've seen so many persons breaking down and crying as they face the harsh reality of death. It is something that is common to all of us. But I want to encourage us today, as we go through these phases in our lives, to hold on to the sure word of God. Because God's words are yea and amen. God doesn't go back on his word. He will give you peace in the midst of of your storm. He will give you help. He's your refuge. He's your strength. He's your very present help. He's your sustainer. He's the one who knows the end from the beginning. He is God, the only wise God. Can someone just lift your hand and give him praise? Come on, just acknowledge his lordship over your lives. Just lift your hand and give him praise. You know, uh, if we should talk about this man, Cruz. Cruz is not someone who I had a lot of encounter with, except on the road. And I, I was wondering if the day would go by without anyone making reference to him on the road, but Shamoni, Shamoni actually alluded to that, when she spoke about it. Um, so that, that's where I, I, I really saw Cruz. But I, I, I got to have a one-time real conversation with Cruz. Yes, Cruz and I uh, were rudely interrupted by, where is he now? He was standing at the door and calling me to come over to him. He always wants my attention. Where is he now? You know what I'm talking, right? So I was rudely interrupted when, um, when I was talking to Cruz by like this same man, but what I got from that conversation with Cruz, well, the tires that are placed in the middle of the crossroad, they were shifted. And I heard everybody say it was Cruz who did it. So I was attending a particular wedding. The bride is here right now. <laughs> And um, while we were there waiting on the bride and the, 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 the bridal party to do their pictures, I, um, I saw Cruz close by and I said, come on, come on. And he came over. The picture I got of Cruz when I spoke to him is totally different from the Cruz I saw driving the motor cars. You would think it's a monster or somebody who you can't even talk to. But Cruz was very polished, very respectful. His thoughts flew very clearly. He, he, he had a plan for his life. 
and it may surprise you, but Cruz had a plan for church. Cruz told me that one of these days, it might surprise you, but never walk in a church. So he's not someone who, who people should have been afraid of. That's a picture that was painted. When you hear Cruz come, you get out of the way. If you're a driver, you better park one side. Because who is coming? The jet. <laughs> the jet. <laughs> but speaking with Cruz, I can, I can agree with those who spoke earlier. Cruz was a really gentle soul. You know, you know we, always, we always make decisions about people. We always tell ourselves that there are some persons who um, are of this and of that, so we'll stay far from them. But when we get to know people, we will have a totally different picture of who they are. So sometimes let's not just stay far off and judge people. Get to know people before you, you make a judgment on who they are. I, I enjoy that conversation with Cruz and that will live with me. All right? I will remember the good person, the good thoughts that Cruz uh, uh, flowed with. You know, and I give God praise that I actually had that opportunity to have, have that conversation with him. And we, we do give God praise for all our young people. You know, even looking at today and all the, the, the things that have happened today, I know there are some people who, who may be writing off our young men and thinking the worst of them. I may look very rough when I, when I, when I saw them um, doing what they were doing. I, I, I was really feeling uh, bad that they were doing what they were doing. But guess what? They need love, and they need to know that someone cares for them. Let's not write them off. If you're a Christian, if you're a mother, if you're a father, if you're a responsible person, when you get down to pray, always remember to pray for these young men. It's not them who, used to, who are doing the things that they do. It's the enemy of their souls who wants to ensure that they are destroyed and go down to hell. You see, the word of God tells us that the thief comes not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And I want you to take note that most of the caskets that come to this church bear the bodies of young men. Take note, most of the caskets that come here bear the bodies of young Young men, young men who we watch grow up, young men who we, we held in our arms right here in church and offered them to the Lord, young men who had very bright future, but the enemy snatched them and turned them into uh, things other than what God had ordained for them. So please remember at all times. And guess what? For those of us who have children, it, it behoves us even more to look out for them, to pray for them, to love them when you pass them on the street. Don't pass them like, what did I say? Drink here at the past gas station. Give a smile to them and let them know that, yes, somebody really has you in mind. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want to be brief with you today with the word as I share with you today. I want to be speaking to us on every decision and action has consequences. Every decision and action has consequences. And no, my sermon is not about Cruz. Cruz has nothing to do with what we preach today because Cruz lies in his casket. He hears nothing that we say. If we speak well of him, he knows nothing. And if we speak bad about him, he knows nothing. So let us be conscious within ourselves. Take heed to our ways, the wise man Solomon declares, and be wise. Every decision you make in life has consequences. 
and so does every action you take. Actions are product of decisions. The inevitability of consequences, one truth that many people do not acknowledge in life. You can escape the consequences, good or bad, positive or negative. They may not be immediate. The repercussion may not be immediate, but they shall surely catch up with you. What many people are going through today are actually consequences of their past decisions and actions. Wise people consider the consequences before they make decisions and before they act. They know they are responsible for their decisions and actions. And I want you to know that you can't blame another person for the consequences of your decisions and actions. You, every single one of you and me, will live with our own consequences. In Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20, this is what the word of the Lord says. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteous of the righteous shall be upon himself. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. So every one of us will live to face the consequences of our action. The scripture is talking about consequences and responsibility. Everybody will be responsible for the consequences of his decisions and actions. If you decide to say something, you will live with the consequences of what you say. You will have to live with the consequence of whatever escapes your lips. What you say can preserve life or destroy it. And I want you to take note that the word of God declares that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. So whatever you, whatever escapes your lips, whether it is good or bad, if you speak evil over your life or if you speak good over your life, then that's what will happen. You, you will condemn yourself with your tongue. Or you can save yourself with your tongue. So if you wake every day and you say, poor me, you're speaking poverty over your life. If you speak blessing over your life, then you will be blessed. So I encourage us today, even in our speech, to be careful of what we say. What you say can preserve life or destroy it. So you must accept the consequences of your words. And that is found in Proverbs 18, verse 20. The Living Bible puts that verse uh, this way. Those who love to talk will suffer the consequences. Men have died for saying the wrong thing. Be careful, every sin has consequences. And if we go back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve disobeyed God, ate the forbidden fruit, and they did not escape the consequences. They died spiritually. And what has happened? We who are descendants of Adam and Eve, we now face the consequences of the sin that Adam and Eve committed. They were ejected from the Garden of Eden. There's a man by the name of David who committed adultery with a woman by the name of Bathsheba. And that had its consequences. God forgave Adam, uh, David, for the sin he committed. But guess what? David still had to face 
the consequences. Here's what God's word said. The sin never depart from his house for despising God and taking the wife of Uriah the Hittite, one of his mighty men. Not only did David face consequences for what he did, but his family also faced the consequences. So, the consequence might even go down to generations that come behind us. So, if you are a parent, if you are, if you are someone who has uh, family members coming behind you, you have to be careful of the seeds you plant because they will come back to affect your generations. Your family will not escape uh, the, the seeds that you plant as well. When Ammon, the first son of David, raped his half sister Tamar, he did not realize that it would have consequences. Absalom, Tamar's fulcrum, avenged this immorality of Ammon later by killing him. And you call that generational curse. Though Absalom's actions were commendable, what Ammon reaped was a consequence of his actions. Here's what the word of God says in Galatians 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see, we reap exactly what we sow. You know, a lot of us, a lot of us go around and do things uh, that hurt others, and we do things that will cause others to be uncomfortable, and we do things without even thinking about the consequences. But I want to remind you today that every action gives or gets reaction. Whatever you sow you will reap whatever you plant. Your crop will one day uh, give you a harvest. You can't plant corn and expect to reap mango. You can't plant badness and expect to reap goodness. You have to know that whatever you put in the ground, if there are any farmers here today, you go to your fields, you put a banana tree in the ground. That banana tree, when it grows up, you won't see star apple on it. You will definitely see banana. And by the way, if you plant even a gross Mitchell, you're not going to see a bumpy. You will still see the gross Mitchell. There are consequences for every action. Everything that you do will reap a harvest one day. I want to tell you today in Cruz Funeral that we need to be mindful of the seeds that we plant, of the actions that we, 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 we emanate, of the things that we go around and do. We need to plant the right seeds because the crops will come. And whatever you plant, that's exactly the same crop that you will reap. You will definitely, I repeat, live with the consequences. So here are some things that you will reap the consequences of. If you practice evil, what are you going to reap? If you sow evil, definitely you're going to reap a big fat drop of evil. evil. If you sow good, you're going to reap a crop of good. If you sow squandering, then you're going to reap your crop of squandering. If you hang out with the wrong kinds of friends, then you're going to reap the consequences of having the wrong kinds of friends because guess what? Some of these friends that we call friends today, when things go wrong in the relationship, they don't want to keep their mouths on what happened between us. They go out and they find even more than you did to them. 
to tell others because they want their case to look good. If you hang out with the wrong set of people, you're going to reap the consequences. You see, I, 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 as a man of God, as one who, who even though they have not entered into your house, I pray, mighty God, that you'll minister to them right there where they are. Yes, God, they are grieving because of the loss of their friend. They do not understand the right way to share this grief. So God, you are a God of love. You're a God of mercy. You're a God of compassion. You're a God who is always there. And I pray that your love will reach them right where they are right now, mighty God. And I pray that they will submit to your will and to your way. You will be exalted in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Have you received the word today? Yes. Let us sow good seed. Amen. Because we will reap what we sow. I believe that we are taking that home today. And as it resonates in our hearts, we may look in our lives and say, after the surety, I need to plant good seed. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We now have the eulogy come to us from Sophia Trey, cousin, and after we pray for the family. Many memories 
as they went out on dinner dates and holiday vacation at Rio Hotel. As a mother, Pat decided her life, dedicated her life to him, as he was her only child. The one she could call on even though he spent most of his time by the seaside. He never passed he never passed his mother's house without stopping and making sure she is okay. He was a very caring young man. Cruz loved the seaside and opted to stay with his father on the beach. Cruz loved having friends over, whether it is to play games or to cook. He developed a love for cooking and he would help to cook and serve in his father's restaurant on the beach. He had a passion for driving, and he would be, be the one to pick up and drop off guests at the airport. As a teenager, his father decided to send him to learn a skill in Savon Lamar and bought him his first bike, which he rode very fast. Cruz was a ladies man. Yeah, he was. And he loves to party. There was never a dull moment around him. Hanging out with his friends, the bar, Kebani, Jay, Casa, Trex, Tani, Wandan, Talman, Bibi, Puchi, and Petra. Just to name a few. He was always on the go and he loved cars. He was a very fast driver. He never slowed down. No, never. He was always going over the speed limit despite being warned by his loved ones. Growing up, his home was always filled with other boys. Oftentimes, he would have divorce stay with him at night. As boys do sometimes, Sheila, his stepmom, always reminded them that they have school in the morning and it is time to stop laughing and talking and go to sleep. Who preferred sports more than book? Cricket was his favorite game and he would play it with his friends in the yard. When matches are being played in Broughton, he was always present. He also loved football and playing it on the beach was exciting for him and a great means of exercising. Crab hunting was one of his favorite pastimes also. And as the rain ended, he would he would be out with his friends with the gloves and flashlight hunting crabs. Cruz loved Christmas time. Sheila always ensured he and his friends went shopping for new clothes in South every Christmas. While, while on his usual errand, just living his life, he met Stephanie through his cousin Trex. He fell in love and the union bought for their sons a year. Steph was the love of Cruz's life. And when he found out she was pregnant, he was overjoyed, beaming with pride, he was now a man. The birth of his son gave him a different outlook on life as he took on fatherhood with pride. He loved his family dearly. He was very involved in Zaire's daily life and would ensure he gets the best of everything. Cruz ensures Zaire's visit Pat and she took excellent care of him while he is in her care. Cruz was a very pleasant young man and he got along well with everyone. He always visited extended family and the familiar warnings is always about the driving car too fast. And his response was always a pleasant smile. Cruz was a people person. Life is but a stopping place, a pause in what to be. A resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We all were meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey is quick. For some, the journey is slow. On the night of June 22nd, 2023, 
the cross was just be himself. We lost a loved one, but gained an angel watching over us from above. Whose time on this earth might have left, might have been briefed, but his impact was profound and everlasting. This jovial for loving and sociable, whose we all know is survived by some say here, spouse Stephanie, father Lennox, mother Thelma Barza, Mother Sheila, Brother Brian, Ricardo, and Georgie, Sisters Dana and Latoya, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, cousins, and many relatives and friends. Until we meet again, these special memories of you will always be a smile on your face. Sleep on and take your rest, my dear cousin. May your soul rest. Bless the Lord. Pray that the Lord will grant you the strength to sit true. Bless the name of the Lord. At this time, we want to pray for the family, for all the well-wishers who are here today who came to support the family. I will ask you to stand with me and the family leader be seated. Praise God and we pray. Hallelujah. You are not a family member. Hallelujah. 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 Can I just ask the family to just hold hands together? Can you just hold hands with each other? Bless God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we exalt you honor you and worship you today because you are our creator. Your word declare that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Father, you are the one that causes this world to be in existence. And so, Lord, we honor you and we worship you. Father, I want to thank you, mighty God, that as you have bring us thus far through this funeral service, mighty God, this Thanksgiving service, I pray in the name of Jesus, as we are about, mighty God, to recess, I pray, God, that you will grant unto the family beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness. Mighty God, I know it's not easy but I pray, God, that you will help them through this storm. Because this is a, a storm that is I, mighty God. But you are always there in the midst of the storm to say, peace, be still. Father, I pray for the family members. I pray, mighty God, in whichever category they are found. Lord, I pray, God, that you will strengthen them. Mighty God, you will help them to know that you have not forsaken them. You were there when even your son was crucified and nailed to the cross. Father, you were there when, when Lazarus, Jesus, your friend died. You felt the pain of humanity. And so, Father, we understand today that it's not easy. But I pray that you will grant them the courage to stand. And, Father, even tonight, God, as they lay the body to rest and they're locked up in their homes, God, this memory is not easy to live with. But I pray, I pray that you will strengthen them. I pray that you will undergird them. I pray that you will uphold them. 
with your right hand of your righteousness. And help them not to fear because you are with them. Help them that they know, mighty God, that even though they walk through the shadow of death, Lord, today we shall not fear because you are with them. Bless them, I pray to you. May the peace of God, the joy of God, the love of God, the pass of all understanding rest upon this family in Jesus' name.
I said to Lord, Child and Lord, tell us a road, Child and For I want to go to heaven and I
Nu e fost acolo, nu e fost. Okay, we're gonna pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, Lord Robin, so please lead us in prayer. Come on. Everybody close your eyes or join us, be reverent. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just want to thank you one more time. Lord, as we are now standing on this one, I grow up. Father, you said, dust will be our farm, and to dust we shall be turned. So, Father, as we are going to to the dust that we came from, Father, that I pray that you the animal to turn. Never let the drunk in man. I pray in the name of Jesus. Never see the if if this is the behavior that we will just leave you know if everyone has to be throwing rum and, and smoking and, 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 and drinking and cussing bad words, we don't have to do it. That's right. Why do Why do not want to show respect to it. Yeah, do it for us. Don't worry. Yeah, man, go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, man, we understand. But there, if we there. have to put up with all the disrespect, we will leave. Don't leave for a hoy. Don't leave. Do it for us. Do it for crews and all of us. They're rude, but it's okay. It's them, it's not the youth. You know, you already. Go ahead again, please. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last drum. The trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this mortal, must put on immortality. This corruptible must put on incorruption. So when this mortal shall have put on immortality, this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. Then 
shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For as much as it has pleased our Heavenly Father, for as much as it has pleased our heavenly father in his wise providence to take unto himself the soul of Odani Brooks, we call him Cruz. We commit his body to the ground. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Let the living take it to heart that we all will die. For it is appointed unto man once to die, but after death comes the judgment. Living people, we are going here. So take 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 a look at yourself. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. The judgment awaits all of us who are not prepared to meet God. Workmen, it's over to you. Oh Lord, my God, when I know someone
One minute, everybody. Yes. Can you just give me your attention for one minute? One minute yes. over here. Each one here today has a choice to make concerning eternity. That's we can choose to believe in Christ, following Him as Lord, or we can live ourselves with no hope for the future. That's right. If we choose Jesus Christ, then there needs to be a change that includes confession of sins and believing in the gospel. The gospel tells us that Christ died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead to show us the way to heaven. If you want more information regarding this way of life, please build a relationship with God. And we are here as ministers of the gospel, we are here to help you to understand the plan that God has for you. The second choice is to go on your way and live as if this life was the only place that matters. Once this choice is made, we will have to live with this decision for all eternity. Remember that being rich doesn't mean you cannot go to heaven. There are so much people who know Christ. But if we trust in our riches or anything else more than Christ, we may find ourselves in a place of torment for eternity. Our friend Cruz, he has lived, what's that, 26 years? 25. 25 years. He's no longer with us. Young people, don't be afraid of the house of God. We don't do anything there to harm anyone. We are there to help you along the way in life. We are here to show you the better choice. And we ask you, consider your ways as Haggai de declares, and be wise. Consider your ways and be wise. Let me tell you, if there's nobody who loves all of you, me love you. Respect. I don't, I don't give against anyone you could be the worst rum drinker right there, you could be the worst yeah. smoker uh -huh. i can tell you that the people of god love you and much more than we can love you god loves you yes. and he declares in his words he rather not the, the death of a sinner, sinner. Yes. he doesn't want you to die in sin, sin. Well, yes. but his will for you is that you will come to repentance Amen. i'm inviting you all to the house of god we are there to help you, to minister to you. And wherever you need counsel, wherever you need help, we are there for you. Let this be a lesson that you think about always. We will die. 
our appointment will come at a time when we don't even think about it. As far as I was told, Cruz was having a good time when his moment came. He could, he could do nothing about it. And we are here today celebrating his life. Consider your ways and be wise. Young men, no go on like you no one this everybody. Because we love you and we want, we want to see better for you. All right? Let's live in one. We belong to this community. And guess what? I can tell you this. I'm a member of the Assemblies of God and a member of this community. And as far as I know, the Assemblies of God won't move me from Broughton. No matter. I will be here to serve you. And I'm always here. Yes, sir. I was forced to make some remark this morning. And I stand by what I said. Yes, But sir. that's not what we want. No. We don't want to know that our community members... And if you check it out most times, we are connected by blood. By blood. We don't want to know that we have to say no to our family. No way. We want all of us to live together. And we want to see you come to know God as Lord and Savior. The Lord bless you. I pronounce a blessing over every young man who is here and who has left. I declare the hand of God over your life. I declare provisions for you, not in illicit ways but in ways that please God. I declare that you're going out and you're coming in, you're protected. I declare that you experience peace like you have never before. I declare that you'll be loved in abundance more than you can ever imagine. And I declare that the help of God be your portion now and forevermore. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. This world is not my home. I'm only passing, passing through. My, my treasures are laid out somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home.
On behalf of the family, on behalf of the family, the family of the late O'Brien, O'Dani Brian Brooks, Cruz Teddy, wishes to express our deep and sincere appreciation to all relatives, friends, and well wishers for the immeasurable support and outpouring of love during our time of bereavement. Your prayers, words of comfort, and telephone calls were deeply appreciated. Thank you, and God bless you. Bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. See you in church. Yeah, we're Not at a grave site. All right. I'm a child, I'm a child, I'm a child, I'm a child, I'm Thank you. 